Hi guys and welcome to tonight's webinar, our 2018 spring racing preview. On the line tonight, we have our two resident form analysts from New South Wales and Victoria, Trevor and Mark. Welcome guys. Thanks Daniel. Yeah, thanks a lot Daniel. And New South Wales winners package, uh, Melbourne ratings package and Trev's bets are all uh, performing extremely well with lots of happy clients. And uh, hopefully tonight uh, we can steer uh, a number of our clients into some uh, good price futures bets. So how we're going to do it tonight, we'll be reviewing a race from Flemington and Randwick on Saturday. We'll also cover the Melbourne and Caulfield Cups. We'll cover the Everest and we'll have a chat about the Cox Plate. So uh, again, welcome guys. And Trev, I'll throw over to you and uh, we'll have a look at a race at Flemington on Saturday. All right, thanks Daniel. Um, I've only sort of done a couple of races so far, so I thought I'd have a look at um, race three on uh, Saturday, which is a 1400 metre listed race for open horses. Um, the rails are at nine metres, which is the traditional rail position on Turnbull Stakes Day. Um, track should play fairly even, but I haven't sort of walked it or had a track report yet, so we'll just work on being even. <clears throat> Excuse me, the map. Um, I'm Wesley, he's a sprinter, uh, going to 1400 for about second or third time. He sort of has some pace. Uh, Holborn goes forward. Um, sure. So John Lavery's a first starter for Lloyd Williams, uh, which ran over sort of a mile, around a mile sort of races in England. So I'm not sure where he maps. I sort of just put him behind the leader. Plain Seal sits just off the pace. A spanner head out wide will go forward. Uh, crack me up will sort of sit midfield with Ike Stein. Uh, Sovereign Nation will get back on the fence. Um, Double Bluff to stay will probably get back last and Shakura will go back from the wide barrier. Um, so the race, um, crack me up. Uh, it's a pretty consistent horse. He ran well first up uh, down the straight. He returned on my figures uh, 60 and a half. Um, he does 62s and 63s, but generally over a mile. Uh, looks his best form to me. He's second up 1,400. Um, I've just left him at the 60 and a half for this race. Uh, Sovereign Nation. Uh, he ran uh, okay sort of first up. Uh, he settled back off midfield. He got a run through and he battled away okay, which was a group one race. He's back in class here. Uh, he did win second up this distance and trip in the autumn. Um, he also, actually his last three wins have been 1400 metre Flemington. So he sort of goes well here. Now, at the moment, I've just put him in at um, what he did last start. I could possibly, sorry, I have gone up half a kilo. Uh, I could probably go up another half, but he will get back on the fence. Um, so it'll just depend a little bit on uh, track bias. Uh, I'm Wesley has been running over sprint distances mainly. He did win in Tassie over 1,400 metres, beating uh, Halver Street, which is pretty good form. Halver Street is a pretty solid horse. Uh, his only other run, he ran fourth in a restricted race, sort of March last year. Um, he's raced okay this time in. This was not 100% we can go to 1,400, so I just sort of took something off his figure from last start and just sort of took one or half a length off him. Uh, plain Seal, um, he ran uh, first up at Mildura on a, a, off a long spell. He's coming back from 426 days. He got back to last. He just had no possible chance. He then improved second up and won at Caulfield. Uh, he went to Newcastle and ran in the Cameron, I think it is. Um, 
And, yeah, group, um, group, sorry, Cramp Cameron. Yeah, he was sort of uh, 11 to 4, you know, sort of $3.70, $3.80 chance, I suppose. Um, and um, he missed the start, got a long way back, um, held his sort of ground in the straight. He comes back here. Um, he has done 61 and a half, 62, 61 and a half before, but again over a mile. Interesting thing is he's coming back in distance here. Um, he's gone 14, 16, 15, now back to 14. Um, I just put him in at what he did at Caulfield um, and I've left him there to start with. Uh, double bluffs, a two-mile start, didn't he get any chance? Uh, Einstein comes down from Sydney. Uh, he ran well um, second up, um, over 1,400 behind Shamook and uh, Champagne Cuddles. Uh, on my figures, he has done sort of, he can do sort of 60, 60 and a half pretty well. He did 59 and a half. He was 20 to one. He was sort of $24 on the Victorian tape. Uh, it's a while since he's won. He hasn't won since May 2017 in Eagle Farm on a heavy track. So I just left him at that figure, 59 and a half, which is what he returned. Uh, so John Lavery, um, he uh, on time form, uh, he's done uh, 114 and 110, so the 107s. Um, so I worked him out at about 112. Uh, Cam helped me out with a, a figure off his scale, which I can convert back to mine, um, which made him about a 60 and a half force on my figures. Uh, he hasn't raced for 350 days. Uh, the stable in the last 12 months has a poor record with these horses that have a, had a long time off. Um, to start with, I just put him in at what the market price has got him at the moment. So the market's 127%. And if I put it at 127%, I have him sort of $6.50. So at 100%, he's $7.50. So I've just left him there to start with at a figure of 58 and a half, but I don't particularly want to be on him. Uh, Spanner Head uh, is coming off a 56 day break. Uh, he did win, she did, she did win uh, last start, backing up in the seven day break. Um, producing a best or set, equal set, equal best figure of the prep. Uh, just with the 56 days off, I uh, wanted to take something off, so I put her in at 55. Uh, Holborn, um, horse we were on last week, uh, last Sunday at Caulfield. Um, he ran well first up at Caulfield. He ran Good at Geelong, and I thought he would improve again. The market thought he would improve. The market and myself both thought he would do 60. And he did 53 and a half. Um, he was three wide, um, but he was sort of under pressure before the corner. He wanted to lay it in the straight, and I just thought he was, even though he was three wide, I, was entitled, I thought he was entitled to fight on a little bit more. Uh, his two best figures have been here. He produced uh, one figure in March this year over uh, this trip of 57, but it was a huge run into the wind. Uh, that, that was a big bias with a uh, strong wind. And then the next day he went 61 and a half. Um, to start with, I sort of put the 59 in and because he was sort of disappointing, I've just taken half a length off. I might just take a bit more off, but to start with, I've sort of just taken half length off that run. Uh, Shakura is going well. Um, first up, she sat midfield and was held up in the straight. Um, put in my notes, went to line hard held, you know, forget the run. Second up, uh, 
I rated her 57 and a half, which was sort of up to nearly what she can do at her best. The market put her in at 57. Um, she got back in a race that was dominated by the first two horses, uh, Tulip beat Choco. They settled one, two on the run. Um, and she worked home okay, but I did make him a notes here that I thought she was looking for 1600 and she stays at 1400 here. So I've improved her off last start, but left her just short of her best. And that gives me a market at the moment, which is uh, fairly wide open. Um, if I go to, so, um, sort of got plain seal, $5, um, I've signed to six fifty, Sovereign Nation and I'm Leslie about seven fifty with Sir John Lavery, which I'm happy to sort of push out, Holborn about nine dollars. I go to the market, um, it's fairly similar. Crack me up so a lot shorter than what I've got it. Two and three are roughly plain seal slightly shorter. Bike Stein's slightly shorter as well. Holman's slight overs. Um, but that's sort of uh, one race that I've done. Fantastic, Trev. Thank you very much. I'll tell you no what, if Spannerhead, if Spannerhead reproduces that last start at Flemington, jeez, 34 no, bucks. 34 bucks. Yeah, we've got a 56. So. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit class. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> third yeah, she's going from a, um, a BM84, benchmark 84, 84, yeah. To a listed race sort of thing. But um, Plain Seals, yeah, the wee horse, Plain Seals, the one that um, yeah, could improve. It's probably got the best form. But um, right, we'll Chris. see what happens. Thank you very much for that. Uh, no Mark, you there? Yes, mate. Yes, I'm here. Yep, all good. Um, okay, I'm uh, going. I've had a look at the Spring Champion Stakes, which is the main race in Sydney this coming Saturday. Uh, the first thing to mention is that um, there is a hell of a lot of rain forecast for Sydney um, from tonight uh, through the next two days and into Saturday morning. It looks like it will. Um, Stopped by the time the race is out on Saturday, but the damage, if the figures they're talking are right, the damage will have been done. They're talking, you know, 20 mils plus um, and even up to 40 mils over the next um, couple of days. So I'm assuming uh, that we're going to be dealing with a heavy track on Saturday. So I'm at this stage um, working on that. Uh, of course, um, any changes in that forecast or what it actually eventuates will uh, cause me to change my thoughts uh, come race morning, but for the purposes of uh, tonight's exercise, let's assume it's going to be pretty wet. Uh, we'll start by, uh, this is a 2000 metre group one race for three year olds, uh, a stepping stone to the VRC derby and uh, the other races down in Melbourne. We'll start with a quick look at the map. Uh, thinking big, Will, uh, he uh, led the Gloaming Stakes and won that race quite convincingly. He'll go straight to the front. Cloak, uh, ran last week in the Dulcify and completely missed the blew the start. If he uh, jumps, he'll come across to outside the leader, somewhere around there. Tarka's got blinkers on. He'll be up a bit closer. Um, Irukandji sat outside thinking big in the gloaming and was out kicked pretty comprehensively in the straight. So first drive 2000, I suspect they'll be a bit more conservative there. Uh, then... Yeah, through the midfield and get back horses. Made made of heavens up from a mile to 2,000. Vizal's an interesting Vizal is an interesting runner. Uh, Kieran Ma trains up from Melbourne um, up to 2,000, which obviously he's been looking for. I assume he'll be mid to back here. Um, uh, Nikki Blue Eyes, frankly awesome, and Dealmaker all drawn wide. It will probably go back, I would suspect. Um, anyway, so we'll just run through the runners. Very interesting to see um, Trevor's database. To have a quick look at that, um, 
obviously is a different scale. Anyone who's seen my webinars before will be familiar with those, but uh, yeah, that was interesting. Um, thinking big is number one, uh, a high chaparral cult um, who fortunately were on last start. I, I've just been waiting for him to get to a trip and he rubbished the 1800 last time. Uh, no reason to suspect he won't uh, like the 2000 just as much, if not more. Um, He's a typical Gay Waterhouse strong one pacer who'll get out the front and make his own luck. He won on a heavy nine on Dubu, so uh, certainly can't mark him down for the wet track on what we've shown so far. I've marked him off 108, which is um, uh, what he did last start when he made that significant improvement and bolted in in the gloaming. Uh, just left him there for the time being. Could, yeah, could arguably give him more. I don't think that's his ceiling, so yeah, but we've, we've just left him there for the time being. Moving through to Tarka, who actually started uh, $3 favourite against Thinking Big in the gloaming. Uh, Thinking Big was backed quite heavily, but started $5, so quite a bit longer than Tarka. Uh, Tarka had won the Stan Fox here the start before on a wet track. Uh, he, he was big odds, and he got a very good run through on the fence, which I think at that stage of the meeting um, was definitely a plus. I think the last couple of races, you could come down the outside. But it seemed to me early in the meeting, the horses on the fence had a, had a real advantage that day. And uh, he certainly took advantage of that. And you can see in his sort of rating pattern over here that the 180 did in winning that day is a significant spike. Um, that said, he's proven on wet ground. And uh, the blinkers go on for the first time. Uh, I, I think you'll find it hard to Turn the tables on Thinking Big, but I, I can see him some sort of chance, um, especially as Thinking Big was able to dominate that small field from the front, and uh, Tarka certainly got out sprinted. If the blinkers can sharpen him up a bit, we can expect some improvement. Uh, next up is Ira Kanji. Um, I can't really have him. He's returned a couple of good marks during his short career. Um, but there's nothing to su suggest he'll is particularly looking for 2000 or that he particularly likes it that soft. So uh, I have marked him uh, well down, 102 well off his best. And he, yeah, I mean, he, he wasn't even able to do that last start. So it, he looks a rough chance at best for mine. Um, Arameo, who uh, uh, actually, looked visually impressive and was quite dominant winning the spring stakes up at Newcastle at a mile. Um, it, and it, it handled the wet okay, or a soft five, handled it okay um, at Rose Hill to start before. I'm not convinced about him either on a very wet track or at 2,000 metres, but the way he's uh, handled himself in his first preparation does give him some sort of chance, I think. But I, I do have him a bit short of some of the other ch uh, main chances. Moving on now to number five, uh, Dealmaker. Now, this is an interesting run. I've actually ended up with him second pick. Uh, he uh, was photo finished by Tarka in the, in the Stan Fox. Um, also did make his run on the rail, so you could argue that he was flattered as was Tarka. He is the sort of horse uh, by Dundeal, very strong um, uh, type of horse who I think he really is looking for the 2,000 metres. He will be well back from the gate, um, but the wet track um, won't be a problem. And he's clearly been set for this race for a while. Um, 28 days, 1,500 to 2,000. If that, most other trainers, that would be a, a minus, not with Chris Waller. He, he knows how to um, uh, give them this sort of preparation and get them to do their best. Uh, if he was able to re reproduce that 108, he'd uh, be a massive chance. Uh, the map's probably a bit of a negative, and he also may have been a little bit flattered that day too. So I, I've just taken him back a point, but I've got him a, a genuine chance in the race. Uh, Mickey Blue Eyes, the um, Hayes runner, interesting one. He, he was very well back last week, and he reeled off outstanding sectionals to win the Dulcify over a mile. Um, He's quickly backing up. He's going from a mile to 2,000 metres um, in the space of a week. So they are setting him a bit of a task. That said, uh, he's by Medaglia Doro, who the breed that generally handles the soft. 
Um, he's out of Zabil Mayor, so the 2000 should be up his alley. Uh, it might just be coming up a bit quick for him, but he was he, the sections he ran last week suggested he is a quality horse, so I'm giving him some sort of chance. Uh, Cloak, uh, we actually had a I had a, had a spec bet on Cloak in the Dulcifier last week. Uh, he was very easy in the market. My thinking was it was a strong southerly last week, and I thought on paces were going to be suited as they usually are at Randwick and under those conditions. That didn't seem to be the case. It was fair, if anything. And uh, to add to his woes, he, he missed the start by three lengths, and that, that really was the end of him, and he, he did nothing. I uh, expect him to improve off that, but, um, and I, as I mentioned when we looked at the map, I expect him to roll forward from the wide gate, but I don't really like him at 2000 or on the wet. I think he's um, going to be struggling on Saturday. Next up. Uh, yeah, Vizal, also I touched on earlier too. Um, really not there on figures on what we've seen so far, but uh, Kieran Ma is a very good trainer. His by Harsha Pirelli obviously wants this sort of trip and further. Uh, he'd be on a derby prep if they can get him there, I would think. So um, I'd certainly be expecting improvement. I mean, I, I, um, he had no hope at Mini Valley the day, other day of 1,500. Um, he's looking for this trip and further. Uh, he, he really is untapped. I mean, he's just got too much to do. Um, I'd have to project him too far to give him a genuine winning chance at this point, but he's one that uh, it wouldn't shock me at all to see uh, make significant improvement okay moving along uh home ground um yeah getting beaten at the provincials in class twos and so forth uh red fifth of the autumn sun and the jj edkins but he, he's out of his depth here um yeah no chance really for me uh we've got purple sector interesting runner third behind mickey blue eyes last week um, and was held up. Didn't have much luck at all. Uh, certainly should have finished closer. Um, it certainly looks as if 2000 uh, will uh, suit him. Uh, I got a bit of a question mark on him on the wet. His, um, his worst performance so far was on a soft seven. But pins, they're not a... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it does worry me a bit. Um, he's He's got some upside. He'll, he certainly should go better than last week. Um, to step off that and win a group one, probably a bridge too far, but um, interesting runner. Uh, made of heaven into the Phillies now. Um, yeah, she's got ability. Um, another one just really can't. Projector too far forward at 2,000 metres on a wet track. Smart missile. Yeah. It, it's really hard to know at 2,000 with her. She ran all right in the flight stakes in a, a very bunch finish. She didn't have much room. Um, she's going to have to take a little step forward off that to win here. She's If she does, she's a chance, but I, I can't project her on the wet at 2,000 uh, as far as to make her a major winning chance. The next one's... The real untapped horse in the race, this Philly, Frankel Philly, frankly awesome. Um, she needs to make a full step of improvement, but as I'd measure at five points to be a winning chance here, but um, she's certainly got it in her. I don't know if it's on Saturday, but she'll be rating that and higher at some point in her career, I would think. Um, she won at Scone. I mean, th th this is how big a jump she's got to make. She won a Scone class two a couple of Fridays to go. Uh, top 40 favourite she was there. Um, she took a little bit of time to get going, but once she hit, uh, once she built up the revs, uh, she put them away very quickly and won very easily. She certainly has that improvement in her. She's drawn 12, so he's either going to have to be wide or drag her a long way back to get some sort of run, but um, I certainly couldn't um, price her right out uh, given the potential that she has got and, and the um, outstanding breeding she has got too. So another very interesting runner. And down the bottom is Panzerfaust. Um, she won a restricted race at Wong quite well, uh, hitting a new peak. She was thrown in the deep end in the gloaming and reverted back to her previous level. Um, yeah, nothing really suggests she's going to go to a new level and win here, I wouldn't think. 
um, yeah, aiming too high. Anyway, so bearing all that in mind, uh, go back to the top. So that gives me a market. And as I said earlier, this is all quite up in the air in the moment. It all does depend on how much rain they do get over the next two days. But that all remains to be seen. I've come up with uh, thinking big around four dollars from Dealmaker at six, then Taka, Mickey Blue Eyes. So that's that's sort of my first edition, my first cut of this market. Um, as I've mentioned in other forums and on previous webinars, if a horse is six percent or more clear in my market, I want to find a way to be on it if I can. Um, thinking big at this point is seven point seven percent clear in my market so he qualifies just have a uh, quick look at the actual market he's around 350 he's a bit under my price um for, if for argument's sake i did come up with a final market that had him four dollars he's a sort of horse i'd probably recommend a, a top fuck or best of the best bet on and and hope we get a, a decent price uh, but he is in that he is in that sort of sweet spot of mine that does have a very high strike rate and has been quite profitable over the last 12 months or so so um if that was to be my final thoughts i would want to uh do my best to be on him um deal maker could be a saver i've got him around the six dollar mark second pick and he's a bit better than that at the moment um i'm expecting him to go very well at 2000 meters as to the others they're all around their right price frankly awesome who i'd projected and still only had around the 11 dollar mark is 850 the early market taking no risks with him i mean as you can see 127 percent markets in a group one is just obscene really i mean this is there's no hidden form here and that's a very high percentage for a race of this caliber at this time of year i think but uh they're certainly taking no risks with um frankly awesome purple sector oh, i had it 20 something to one they're, they're obviously reacting to the um uh the it having no luck last saturday uh, they've actually got the same price as mickey blue eyes which i think is a bit, a bit drastic um yeah Taka's around my price as is Aramayo and Dizal they're sort of hard keeping safe at 20 to 1 so yeah uh, to me it looks like thinking big who I think is VRC Derby favorite at the moment or equal favorite uh having already run on the heavy he's the sort of horse I would would be looking to back and he does look clear topic at this, this stage but uh like I said earlier we'll um we'll have to wait and see what transpires weather wise over the next couple of days before we make any final decisions all right, Mark. Thank you for that. Yep, no problem, we, uh, mate. We're gonna we're gonna stick with you for the time being. And Trev, feel free to jump in. Um, we're going to uh, have a look and preview the uh, very very interesting uh, Everest this year. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. It, it's changed complexion over, again over the last twenty four hours. Vidura has now got a slot, so she'll be she'll be running. Um, all the pre-post betting is very even. We've, I think we've got Sandra and Elaine, Trapeze Artist and Vega Magic uh, around the $7 mark equal favourite. So that just gives you an idea of how even the race is. Um, there's two runners I would be interested in at this stage. Um, again, the, the tipping rain into early next week too. So this is something else we're going to have to keep an eye on. So do be wary if you're having a futures bet. Could be wet on the day. But um, the two I'd be interested in in this market would be Trapeze Artist, who ran third to Sandra Anna Lane and Shoals uh, last Saturday. Uh, the thing about Trapeze Artist is that in both of his last two preparations, he's pulled out a, a, a huge figure, either third or fourth up. and Bearing in mind, he would have been targeted at this race for, for months, ever since his autumn campaign finished. You can be pretty sure he's going to bring out one of those those huge uh, performances. Um, it, 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 last spring, he bolted in the Golden Rose after a wide trip, and in the autumn, he uh, went ran straight past Red Zell on the TJ Smith. If he's in that sort of form, I think he's the one to beat, and I think he I would have him in front of the likes of Santa and Lane and Vega Magic and Red Zell and all of those horses. Um, the, the very interesting runner in this field is going to be US Navy flag, the uh, Aidan O'Brien trained visitor. Um, the only way we can line him up is on uh, the time form figures. We 
pretty confident we've got a, a pretty good handle on how to uh, convert them to, to our scale. Um, his July cut win uh, from the front was dominant. Uh, and if we wind him up right, if he reproduces that, he'll be winning this race. And he's, he's around 10 to 1 at the uh, at the moment in the futures markets. Uh, he's He's gone okay on European soft tracks, whether that, you know, if he cops a, you know, genuine heavy tenant Randwick, I don't know what that's going to mean for him. But um, on trying to line up his European figures or his UK figures with what we've got over here, uh, he could well be the winner and he's, he's around the $11 mark at the moment. So he's the one I'm really interested in and trapeze artist of locals. Trevor, you there? Yes, yeah, sorry, yeah. Mate, a lot of good judges uh, that I've spoken to have said uh, after last weekend, um, get on Brave Smash next start. Did you did you end up did you see that run? Uh, yes, yeah. So um, so I'll just bring it up here. Um, He wasn't suited at the trip and everything like that. Um, um, <clears throat> yeah, put him, you know, I thought he could run. He ran about a length and a bit off his best, but he'd be better suited at um, out to uh, the 1200. And um, so on my figures, I've got him doing 66 uh, about four times, um, which is... Uh, actually, went to about four times, five times actually. So, which I would have thought he could probably do that figure. Um, as an aside, um, just some um, my figures. Um, um, as Mark said, Trapeze Artist, he's, um, he's a pretty good horse. Um, Fedora couldn't have been any more impressive last Friday night, and I'm, I'm yeah, wrapped that on, Lloyd got uh, her into the field. Yeah, I've got Trapeze Artist. Um, best figure I've got for him is 67, so I've got him going about half the length better than... Um, um, uh, Brave Smash, um, and then I had Santa Ana. I had that um, Santa Ana rain, Santa Ana Lane race coming good last week. I don't know if Mark and uh, Dan did, but yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, certainly a new peak for Shoals on my stuff, and uh, yeah. just Santa Ana Lane might have been a new peak too. Um, uh, yes, the race did go very well uh, on on time. Yeah. Um, my only uh, trapeze artist. Sorry, go on. Sorry. Uh, yeah, trapeze artist was beaten in that race, but uh, my thinking is that he'll be bringing out his real peak third up. Uh, yes. Is, yeah, that's that's my thinking anyway. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I don't know. So if I'm off the on raw, like I still got trapeze artist doing better than both of those. I suppose the only other one that I've got good figures for is Vague Magic, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Mark, have you got any? Have you got an indication of um, how the how the race is going to pan out from a speed map point of view? Well, I, I'd have to give it more thought. I, seeing U.S. Navy flags win, it was down the straight track at Newmarket, but he he just took you know he just went straight to the front and took control. It looked, looked beaten a couple of times, but it was really really strong at the end, and it's a quite a sharp up, uh, uphill run to the line there it's an undulating straight track but the last bit's uh, uphill and uh, he was just too strong for them so i given that i'd be surprised if they didn't put him right in the race from the uh, word go um uh, yeah i mean uh, you would think with 13 million dollars on the line they're not really going to hold up it's got to be high pressure <laughs> um, absolutely i yeah I, I think it'll be truly run it's the, the thing is, one of the other reasons I like US Navy flag is there's some good horses in this field, but it's not, you know, there's no black caviars. There's probably not even any hay lists. This is, you know, it's just an, a good, ordinary, even bunch of sprinters. So if he can bring his best overseas form, 
it will be no surprise to see him beating them, I think. All right. US Navy, US, US Navy flag for Mark, Trev. Uh, I, no, I, sort of don't, I, I don't even know what's running, to be honest. <laughs> um, I'm sort of too worried about Danny. I, I, will, um, I wish it was a race that they had in Melbourne because at least you can bet in it. Um, because you, you know, apart from um, the one overseas, at least you know all the other horses where you know the cups. And the big races down here nowadays, you just there's too many horses that you just don't know. So um, you know, you tend not to bet in the big races. So I think it's been well promoted the race. And um, you know, it was a if it was a race in Melbourne for Melbourne horses, I'd definitely be betting in it. So I'll go Vega Magic. All right, guys. Very good, Trev. Very good, Mark. We'll move on to the Cox Plate. Mark, we'll start with you. Um, we'll have a conversation betting around Winks. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that's probably pretty sensible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I will say this. I It doesn't look like the Autumn Sun is going to go to the Cox Plate. Uh, I thought if he was... I wasn't, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna tip in tip in to beat Winks, but if she um if he had she had any sort of off day and he he turned up at his best, it would be a good race. Um but it uh, he's listed as doubtful in all the markets I've seen, so it, it really doesn't look like he's going there. Which is unfortunate. Um uh, last year we saw Humidor run her very close when she was attempting win uh number three in the race. Uh I think what happened there was that the track was very, very firm, suited Humidor and doesn't really uh, suit Winks. So I think she likes a bit of sting out of the track, especially as she's getting older. Uh, with, you know, a capacity uh, a capacity crowd and attendance and Winks going for the historic fourth in a row, I don't think there's any chance the track will be too firm this year. They will move heaven and earth to make sure this and given it. Um, yep. So I, I think... Um, if anyone wants to hope that she's not going to be at her best or not have conditions to suit her ideally on Cox Plate Day, they're, they're, it's probably a forlorn hope. I think that the club will make sure Winks um, gets every chance to do her best and um, break the break that record. Um, Trev? Yes. Yeah, oh, sorry, Mark. No, 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 that's that's fine. Thoughts, Trev? Um, yeah, well, I just think... Um, um, on my figures, um, she has, well, you know, clear uh, her three wins. I've got her going um, 79 and a half, which is like um, the second best figure I've got for any other horse. I think Sumador at 74 last year. I've got her doing 73 and a half the year after. No, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, and the year after, and I've been doing 74. So on my figure, she's a 73 and a half to 74 and can do better. Uh, and the best of most of the others are sort of 65 horses. Um, Humidor was a big spike figure last year. Um, I don't know that he's going as well this year. Uh, last year, he, he did win second up. The Craig Lee this year he was disappointing and then the other day he was okay but um, Possum Stardom was 80 to 1 and got better short half head and Lloyd's horse goes okay but um, she's just a different class. Um, Grunt was sensational at Flemington but it was put on for him. Um, he can't get around Caulfield uh, as I heard someone say the other day if he can't get around Caulfield how's he going to get around Moody Valley? Um, so I think she, you know she'll she'll just the only way she'll um, get beaten is if you know heaven forbid she breaks down. Um, but um, there's I've got good figures for uh, the autumn sun, but just the way I do the weight compression, um, you know she doesn't finish up as much uh, weight. Um, differential um but 
at the moment, I don't think there's a second pick. Oh, maybe um, D'Argento. Yeah, I think D'Argento should be ahead of Humidor. Uh, he's, yeah. he's a really good boy old, and he'll go better at 2,000. Yeah. Uh, On raw figures, uh, you know, I've got her every day a week, six length better horse than him, and she can do better if she wants to. And we'll get weight off the Yeah. So um, we all want to see her get four. Yeah, I mean, unless you're betting in the, against her, and you know, I don't, I don't see the point of that. Yeah. Um, yeah you, I mean, just for the good of racing, you'd like to see a win. Yeah. The only thing I'd say about that market is, and then there might be some value winks out. Is I'd I'd have um, Dargeno in front of Humidor, whereas the market's got it the other way around at the moment. And it's unlikely the autumn sun's going to start. No, it doesn't. It doesn't look like it. Okay. All right, that's it. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say that, like, yeah, he, he's only a young horse, and I mean, just could, you know, could bust him chasing her. That's right. That, that, a, yeah, that's not a risk they want to take, obviously, yeah. No. And a lot of the times in the past, the three rolls have run as an afterthought anyway, and it does bust them, you know. Yeah, yeah that's right. All right. Well, that brings us on to the Cups, um, Melbourne and Caulfield Cup. Are you interested to hear um, from you as well, Mark, um, and with Sydney Horse, uh, Sydney Racing as well, um, how you guys gauge uh, the imports? And I know you've touched on it a little bit with um, US Navy flag, but is there a hard and fast rule to it or what factors do you guys take into play when the imports come well uh, i the only guide i've got or that uh, me and cameron use is uh, a, a time form sort of conversion um and then it's dig up the tapes see if you can gauge any likes and dislikes that way uh so that, that but all that gives you as a guide i mean it, it's really hard to make any hard and fast decisions on the basis of of that when you know you haven't come up with the figures yourself and you know you, you're taking on trust how how fit and well and forward they are and all that sort of stuff so it it, it is a bit of a nightmare really i mean you, there are ways and means of getting of lining them up with the, with the locals but it um it certainly is difficult trev i uh, well, did something similar i sort of, sort of tried to find a time for them and line them up with my my own, and then um, I just and then I just use the market as a guide as well, um, and put them in. And um, yeah, I'd much prefer they weren't in the race, and then I could bet in it. Um, if there's too many of them and there's too many in the market, then I just won't bet in the race. Yep. Is it just me, or is the Caulfield Cup field lacking a little bit of star quality this year? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's, I know Hartnell didn't, you know, it's a sort of race horses like Hartnell were, you know, mooted to run in, you know, and, you know, Jamaica won it by length that year and she was, you know, outstanding 2,400 metre horse. Yeah. It doesn't appear to be, yeah, of that quality this year. Trev? Uh, no, I yeah, agree. Like, um, well, you know, the favourite, and I, you know, I think amongst the uh, Australian horses, he's probably deserved favourite. Um, is his best rating was in the Mornington Cup. No, mm -hmm. you know, just the Mornington Cup. Um, and if he runs to that figure, then he's a deserved favourite amongst our horses. Um, yep. And then Home Homesman and um, Night Watch, you know, they're honest, but. Yeah, they're no, you know, it's not a great, um, you know, there's no Elstroms or Making Me Divas or yep. um, sort of horses in the race. Um, yeah, it's almost like a size of honest and horse and, um, but yeah, it's sort of no, you know, he won the derby. You've got Boone Inch in the, <coughs> excuse me, got Boone Inch in the AJC derby. So he, could, he was nearly a dual derby horse, but um, yeah, it, just, it tends to lack, you know, genuine 
talk on you also would have thought. Avilius is interesting uh, and we'll know more about him uh, in Melbourne anyway after after Saturday. Uh, he, he's, he hasn't really been touched in his three wins in Sydney yet, so he's certainly still got something more to give. They dodged uh, a very winnable Metropolitan last Saturday to um, go to the Bart Cummings to qualify for the Melbourne Cup. Um, so he, he's, uh, he's a very interesting runner, certainly. Yeah, he produced a big figure at um, uh, Ramwick and did it on his ears the last. It was sort of like he just joined in and then he grabbed hold of him. Yeah. And um, the previous wins have been a bit like that. Once he's he's put them away and he has switched off in the last 50 or so, it's, um, yeah, he's, he's exciting and there's certainly upside there. And, well, I, I think uh, the fact that they missed the Metropolitan gives you an idea of how highly they regard him because that was, you know, a a very uh, rich prize money race, they've, and they've just left that on the table to try and get their Melbourne Cup uh, qualification yeah. in. I don't know. All right, beautiful. So, uh, Avilius, interesting runners in the Caulfield Cup. Let's uh, have a look at the Melbourne Cup now. I don't know, Mark, if you've had a chance to have a look at the uh, early markets or done any form for it. Um, I've had a look at the early market, but it's, um, to be honest with you, it's beyond me. It, it's... You know, the, the sort of racing I, I uh, concentrate on is just eons away from, you know, what we're presented with here. It's, I, I will do the four minute, you know, closer to the day to just ha have some sort of opinion. But it's, yeah, it's only out of my depth uh, this far after a Melbourne Cup, to be honest with you. You're never out of your depth, Mark. <laughs> Ever. Trev. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm similar as in, oh, I just wrote down the first, seven horses in the market and the first two I've never heard of um there's 13 to 1 equal favorites from over so I don't sort of tend to worry I don't watch the overseas races I don't worry about anything until the field comes out on Saturday night um so roughly on my figures uh Avilius's third pick um he's got uh, uh, so Avilius, Holmes Glen and Kingsville Dream have all got the same weight. Uh, and I've got Kingsville Dream rating slightly higher and has done sort of a length and a half higher than the other two. And I would have said Avilius can keep improving and probably Holmesman's would be third pick out of those two. Uh, Toss and Basil went okay the other day. But it was against Holmesgren, and he's got to give Holmesgren weight. So probably of the, yeah, you know, it's starting the obvious, but of the Australian horses, you know, you probably got Avilius and Kingsville Dream. We've got a clear gap on the rest. Um, as I say, yeah, the first two I've never heard of: Cross Counter and Magic Circle, or something. I, I would say that um, if I could, that. If if uh, if anyone listening's got an opinion or has been following an, an import, uh, I, I wouldn't be talking them out of it because I I wouldn't be surprised to see an import win again. I don't think this is a vintage uh, lot of Australian or Australian-based stayers, and um, I wouldn't be at all, I, I don't know which one, but I would expect an import to be uh, to be probably winning again this year. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think that's a fair call. Mark and Trev, uh, I think that'll just about do us tonight. Thank you both for your time. No problem. No problem at all, mate. Um, guys, uh, please get in touch if you've got any questions regarding uh, the Melbourne and Victorian subscriptions that we have. Call us on 1300 500 057 or email us at team at champion bets. These guys are absolutely flying and they know their, uh, they know their stuff. Thanks again, Trev and Mark. No Thanks, Trevor.